James can say it. Yeah? Okay, James, your pizza. Uh, and then Jacob K. Yeah, Jacob, I think your pizza's ready too. So. Okay, sorry for that. We got pizza! We have Charlie, Billy's Charlie. Woo! Come to stay! Yeah. Silences, you know? Thank you. <laughs> I read online that it takes about five seconds for a moment of silence to actually become awkward. Let's see. What's your name? Uh, yep, that's you. Lexis. Lexis? Are you dating anybody right now? Okay. <laughs> that's a new record. <laughs> I'm 20 now, so it's like okay if I date older women. It's not weird anymore. It's weird because I already have a girlfriend, but uh, other than that, <laughs> at my work, an uh, old woman came up to me, not old, like 40, and she started hitting me and she said, hey, you're cute. I said, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, hey, don't worry, you're my son's age. I said, oh, that worries me even more. <laughs> You ever hate when you start a class and you have to stand up and say your name and a fun fact about yourself? I never know what to say. Uh, so class starts, I say, hi hey, everybody, my name's Charlie. Fun fact about me, I was born, uh, not that, I, everybody knows that, but uh, I was born with jaundice. <laughs> Teacher's like, all right, that's the fun fact you chose to tell everybody. You were born with orange skin. I was like, yes, yeah, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, I remember uh, being born with jaundice and I got put in an incubator away from all the normal, privileged babies, you know? And I remember thinking as a newborn, like, these are some racist ass doctors putting me in the orange only section of the hospital. What the fuck? <laughs> Any orange people? <laughs> So, I have a joke that I really like doing, but I can't do it anymore. Uh, I'll explain why after I say the joke. So, my girlfriend's parents' Wi-Fi password is impeach Trump. And I thought, yeah, that's what's going to do it. <laughs> but you know what happened after that. But uh, ever since then, my Wi-Fi password has been, Dad, come home. <laughs> Hey Bree, look at my notebook. After Wi-Fi password, what's the next thing written? Grandparents Apple. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so my grandpa on my dad's side is the most alcoholic man I've ever seen. And uh, my grandma on my mom's side is also an alcoholic. Which unfortunately for me means at some point in my life, I'm probably gonna have a really good time. <laughs> and for my wife and kids, a very sad time. <laughs> I remember going to my grandpa's house, and my grandpa was like, passed out in the chair, and I was like, Mom, why is grandpa sleeping in the chair all the time? She says, oh, Charlie, he's not sleeping, he is defeated. <laughs> Jesus Christ, oh my God. <laughs> Uh, speaking of my mom and dad, uh, ex-mom and dad, they got divorced. A little thing about me, they've been divorced and remarried to other people several times. And at what point does that become my fault? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember the first time my mom drove me to the church parking lot and stopped and she said, Hey Charlie, uh, your dad and I, we're just not happy anymore. I was like, ah, shit, are you leaving me here? <laughs> she said, no, we're getting divorced, and we want, to, we want you to know that it's not your fault. I was like, yeah, I'm in first grade. I don't feel like I'm really putting a lot in this relationship. 
but it really gave me a lot to think about um, on my way home walking from the church. <laughs> hey, thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. Um, up next, we have Shane. Now, he's been sick for a while, and he's still here being our host, okay? And he thinks I'm going to roast him, but he's still running a fever, so his body's in that for me, so you <laughs> um, My first interaction with law enforcement, I was 11 years old, and they called me a terrorist. I was in Dallas, the Dallas airport, I was flying back to Hong Kong with my family, and I said the word bomb in line. Why? I don't know. That's not a very airport-friendly vocabulary, in case you're wondering. And here's why. Because, lower culture, is that close? All right, thank you. Um, and because as soon as I said that, this TSA agent whips his head around. He goes, he goes, you say mom, son? I need you to come with me. And he pulls us out of the line, okay? And he checks my passport, and it turns out there's this guy from Idaho with an open board for terrorist threatening. Now, I, I have a couple questions. Uh, first off, um, with an open warrant for terrorist threatening. Now, I have a couple questions about that. Now, first off, again, I'm 11. I'm 5 foot 2. I weigh 80 pounds. In what world am I committing federal crimes? <laughs> Secondly, how do you commit terrorist threatening in Idaho? First off, there's no one to threaten. Nobody lives there. Okay. <laughs> Secondly, what are you gonna threaten to do? Well, oh, fatal field car. Okay. So that's. Do you, do you work here, by the way? Is that? That is. That was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> what you go? This is amazing. Uh, secondly, what should, I, what should I threaten in Idaho? Then that would get, that would get someone a felony. Like, is there anything out here? Like, am I go, like both potato field? Like, what's gonna? What can I do? All right. But this TSA agent was so excited. He called the supervisor, and we got him. Same name, same height, same ethnicity, it's all good. And the supervisor walks in, okay? He looks at me for five seconds, and he goes, hey, uh, Craig, Craig, this boy is 11. Uh, I don't think this is the right man, Craig. And Craig, he just, his, his dreams died, okay? He was going to the White Office, he was going to be Barack Obama, and I took that all away from him being 11 years old, all right? But we still have a problem. Because now that Craig red flagged me, I can't legally fly for two hours, and our flight's in 40 minutes. And for some reason, the airline won't just let my parents stay behind. So they say, you know what, we'll keep your son in custody for six hours, put him on the next flight, and you can meet him there. And my parents just go along with it. They're like, oh, that's fine, he's 11, he has a DS, he can play Mario Kart, keep him in custody. I've had friends that sell drugs and in custody for less than six hours. What the hell is this? I've heard nothing. Makes no sense. God bless America. Um, speaking of criminals, I was mugged by a Girl Scout the other day. <laughs> yeah, right? Wild. Um, I'm standing in the intersection by Arnold so I'm about to head to Ford. This squirrel girl comes out of nowhere, tugs my jacket. Mister, would you like to buy a cookie? Now, I don't share a whole lot of calm with John Mulaney. Uh, I've never been on the radio. I never wrote for SNL. I don't have a wife. Uh, he's white, and I, um... Yeah. <laughs> But we do share one thing in common, and that's the fact that I also have the backbone of a chocolate player. Because this girl asked, do you want to buy a cookie? And I, who don't want to buy a cookie, have maybe 10 bucks to my name, and I've never bought a cookie before, I say, sure. And so what am I going to do? Say no. And this girl grabs me by the hand and physically drags me over the cookie stand, and she says, so, what do you want? And I'm a sucker, so I just say, I don't know, what's good? Now, y'all, I don't know what happened next. Like, I staggered away 15 minutes later, okay, broke as shit, with six boxes of cookies. I don't, I don't know what they are, like, thin mints, okay, like that, uh, that at least I know what I bought, but the other five, the names make no sense. Like, toffee-tastic, like, I guess, sure, like, I don't know what I'm getting into. The other four sound more like My Little Pony character rejects, like, I don't, I don't know what I bought. Well, what can I do about it? I talk to my friends about it for, like, chance, you are not mugged, you just you can't say no to a kindergarten, I'm sorry. Like, and I'm gonna file a police report. Uh, you said she was uh, four foot eleven, uh, seven, seventy-two pounds, age of nine years old. No, they'll get you. Yep. They're dangerous. So <laughs> what am I gonna do? I'll have fun. Thanks, y'all. How are you guys doing? You guys doing good? Woo! Yeah. I'm not doing so good. Um, I've uh, been sick these past couple days, and. Uh, no, for those who see me, it's not coronavirus. Um, it's actually influenza A, 
there's a type B and C, but I'm Asian, so I don't do anything below that. Uh, <laughs> I learned a lot about my body this past weekend. Um, I learned that, like, when I sleep, when I sleep, I dream about things that, like, I need, that my body needs, like, in dire situations. Like, I dreamed I was, like, in a tropical place, and I was, like, Capri Sun, and there was, like, a white Bronco, and I jolted away, and I was like, oh my god, I need juice. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I also learned that my immune system is just, like, not good. It is, like, comparable to, like, the penis enlargement pills that I bought at 7-Eleven as a joke that one time. Um, it just, like, doesn't work. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, anyway, speaking of being sick, I was actually sick like, two or three weeks ago. And I went to CVS to buy some NyQuil. Sorry about that. And as I said, so I bought the NyQuil. You know, the person who's ringing me up was like, hey, do you have ID? Uh, and I was like, why, why do I have ID? It's like, well, actually, to buy NyQuil, you need to be 18 or older. And I was like, oh, it's so weird. Like, I didn't know that they had regulations on them like that. I didn't know, know that and that. It's fine because, you know, I'm 19. But, you know, I kept on talking because I didn't have my ID on me. Like, it's a CVS, not a strip club, okay? So. <laughs> And you know, I'm, I figured a way to finesse out, and I actually, you know, found a way to finesse out of the situation. And what uh, I think cool kids they call it uh, stealing. <laughs> I booked it out of there, and you know, the lady who was ringing me up, she was like, "Wow, like his nose is not the only thing that was running." Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, but uh, I was thinking about that whole Nyquil thing, and it's like. It's kind of weird that you know it's 18 or older, but that I guess that means that at a certain point there were 17 year old or and like younger people getting messed up on Nyquil. <laughs> like how do you like how would you even approach that to your friends? You're like, yo, what's up, guys? Like, want to be crazy tonight? They're like, yeah. Like, what do you have in mind? Like, get sleepy. <laughs> I also think it's weird that Nyquil is at like the same age as like all the other things you can do when you're 18. There's no guy. Who's like, he turns 18 and like, oh my god, you're 18, like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go vote, like, you're gonna get a tattoo, like, you're gonna buy a lottery ticket? He's like, no, no, no. I'm gonna go legally cure my common cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was on a plane coming back, you know, from winter break, and there's baby crying. Um, and, you know, it didn't bother me too much, you know, whatever, but the guy, you know, next to me, you know, it clearly it was really, really bugging him. In fact, so much he turned to me and said, God, this is the worst thing that can happen on a plane. <laughs> the, wor the worst thing? <laughs> We're on a plane. Like, past evidence show that that is just a clearly a wrong statement. Like, the, the first thing that is the worst thing is that the plane falls out of the sky, and like, two through a hundred is just like different variations of that. <laughs> I was thinking about it, I don't even think that, like, a baby crying is like even that bad. Like, it's annoying, sure, but like, you can, you know, like, if you don't want to hear it, you can just kind of zone it out, like, you know, at least maybe it doesn't, like, talk, you know? It's like, that would be, like, horrible. Like, you imagine you're on the planet and you're like, give me the titty! I want the titty! I want the titty! And I'm like, weird, odd where that be. I'm just about trying to watch Toy Story 4. Baby's making this weird request. <laughs> Alright, that's all I have to do. Welcoming uh, someone who's doing open mic again for the first time. Let's welcome Domain to the stage. Thank you. I can sit here, right? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do this because no one's done it yet. <laughs> you can't see it right now, but my knees are shaking really bad. Uh, everyone's in doubt here, right? So I can swear. Yes. Because I get very nervous, and when I get very nervous, uh, I start swearing. It's not very good. I see a recording right there, so that brings my bad memories. <laughs> uh, the last time I did an open mic was Poetry Slam in high school. Uh, I did a love poem, and it was in front of like the friends of my crush, and you know they knew about the crush, and they recorded the whole thing, and then they put it on YouTube with my name on it. <laughs> Now every time I Google my own name, the first result is that video. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> like now I feel, now I know how it feels like to be Ryan Reynolds every time you watch a Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
only, I don't have 75 million dollars. I'm not that poor. And you know, I don't own a fucking gin company. The guy owns a fucking gin company. Dude, I don't, I can't even fathom the idea of buying my own alcohol. Like, let alone like buying a whole fucking alcohol company. It's crazy. I only have $75 in my bank account. I can't even buy a Deadpool costume. Right? Costumes cost much more than that. Like, do you guys think the celebrities Google their own names? Like, you're just like sitting down there, like imagine Mark Zuckerberg just like chilling in this like, I don't know, like multi billion dollar house, and then he's just like, how much is Mark Zuckerberg worth? And then he just takes a look at it and says, $74 billion. And then he just does his face. And then he looks at his Swedish banker and goes like, and he starts laughing, and the Swedish banker starts laughing, and looks at the Irish banker, and the Irish banker starts laughing as well. And then he just drinks his like million dollar whiskey or something. <laughs> um, I was actually joking about the drinking part. Mark Zuckerberg can't drink. Y'all know he's a robot. Um, I wasn't actually joking about the Irish part though. Like, just this morning I woke up with a headline. Apparently Facebook is getting sued but for like $9 billion because of some offshoring in the Irish company. Um, I feel like that would be like, for Mark Zuckerberg, like that would be like paying a traffic ticket, $9 billion. You know, like just wake up one morning and you see like, oh, I gotta pay $9 billion? Shit, man. On Saturday? I just bought a holiday mansion. Where am I gonna go now? I have to go to the courthouse and pay my traffic ticket. It's crazy. I can't, I don't think. Um, hang on, I'm gonna check this out. I forgot what I was gonna say next. Um, Zuckerberg's actually a pretty unique name. Like, can you imagine what happens if you have the same name as Mark Zuckerberg? You're just working at a Starbucks, and some, some guy walks in and attacks Zuckerberg, and guys ask you, and like whoever's ordering just asks you, are you related to Mark Zuckerberg? Dude, I work at Starbucks, what do you think? <laughs> it's actually pretty common for people to have the same name. I'm talking about same exact name, like given name and last name. Like right now in my dorm, there's two people called Gavin Alice, Gavin R. Ellis, they both have the same like initial for their middle name, you know? And every time we see each other, say, hey, Gavin Ellis! Hey, Gavin Ellis! Um, the same thing happened in like middle school. I'm from Singapore. And because both of them had the same name, so it was kind of difficult, fortunately for us. Like one of them had a middle name. Um, unfortunately for that guy, his middle name was Lay Cock. Uh, it's tough on him. It's like middle school, you know? Like, kids are cool. Like every time we see him, it's like, oi, lay cop! You know, it's like terrible. I feel bad for the guy. Like, it's just, honestly, like, if you ever get yourself in a situation like that where you're getting bullied, bullied like, my only advice is, you know, don't have the middle name. Like, don't have lay cock as your middle name. Oh, that sucks. You ever notice, um, you ever notice how, like, guys, like, sometimes give names to their cock? Like, you know, Lil Willie, Johnny. That kind of stuff. You know, these girls don't do that. Can you imagine what happens if girls name their vagina something? Like, guys, just, the, the, like, guys just making a call. Hey, babe, can I come over? Little no, Johnny wants some action. And the girl's like, sorry, you can't come today. Georgina is bleeding out. <laughs> Stupid. Um, I have a theory as to why guys like to do that. I think it's maybe because cock sounds is a pretty gay thing to say. Like, try saying cock. Cock. Oh, dude, I'm so fucking good. I just made the whole room say cock. <laughs> but yeah, like when you say cock, notice how it lips round and how the sound is like cock. It sounds like you're choking on dick. <laughs> it's an onomatopoeia, that's how you say it? Yeah, that's why people give names to their dick. Here's a weird thing though. Like, never notice this, these like dick names. They're always the names of white guys. Like Lil Willie, Johnny, Richard. You don't hear them say like what, like Asian names, like, you know, like Yamamoto, <laughs> or like Ming, or like Chig. Why not? Like, Asian? Like, just name it Asian names. It's pretty cool. That works. Yeah, just don't be basic. Don't call it like Lil no Johnny, you know? Like, if it was me, I wouldn't call like, I wouldn't call my dick Johnny. Like, you know, if I was walking down the street and someone like saw me doing like the guy thing and I'm trying to adjust my underwear, I would just like stop, like stare them in the eye and like, yeah, sorry, man. Big Tyrone needs his space. <laughs> yeah, that's my time. Thanks, guys. Now, up next, we have Anna. Welcome, Anna, to the stage. Well, 
behind you, like I always do. Um, I may be the only woman here, but I'm not the only comic with tits. <laughs> so uh, something like really weird happened to me today, and this is this is 100% a true story. At 1 p.m. today, I met Gandhi's grandson. At the Asian American Cultural Center, there was a panel about religion, and I met Gandhi's grandson. Now, there was a charcuterie board at this place, and that's why I stayed. And not only did I eat my weight in cheese in front of him, I went to go get more grapes. And since I'm a klutz, I was taking the tongs and picking the grapes off the vine one by one to put on my plate. And he walked up behind me, scoffed, and took all the grapes. Now, for skating off of somebody's glory that was famous for not eating, he sure eats a fucking lot. What was that? But yeah, um, he laughed at me. My, you know, my, my mom laughs at me a lot. She thinks I'm kind of like a disappointment or something. I don't know. Maybe it's the like earrings that are shaped like little chickens that I wear. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> They're like, I don't know. They're like this bright yellow. But like, speaking of like these like yellow ass earrings, I had an Uber the other day that just pulled up and it was yellow, like bright yellow. First of all, it was a yellow car. Um, it was like an Uber X or whatever the like fancy one is. So it was like big and it was like, just a really, like a really big yellow car. So like, I got in and I'm like sitting there. There's first of all no seatbelts at all, and there's like gum under the seat. But I like, I guess like it was 6:15 in the morning, so it was probably like a school bus or something. <laughs> so they did. they didn't want to get off. <laughs> Not allowed in school zones anymore. <laughs> I've raided the crafts too many times. The preschoolers are getting really bad at me and stealing all of the crafts. Uh, but yeah, uh, my, uh, my bad taste in, in fashion also translates uh, to my bad taste in men. Um, every, every, uh, every boyfriend I've ever had uh, has turned out to be gay. Um, not, not a bad thing, just uh, obviously I'm not a man, so that's like not their thing. Um, like every every relationship I've had, like my first boyfriend, gay, second boyfriend, gay, my girlfriend, gay. Like, <laughs> sucks. <laughs> Speaking of which, right? What happens to your news when you break up with someone? Do you delete them? Do you keep them? I'm not asking anybody in this room, like particularly. I'm just saying, like. I'm a sentimental person, so I, I keep everything. Are you one of those are you one of those people that like when you break up with somebody, you like delete every picture of you two together? Do you do like on your Facebook you like going through and you're like, ugh, every single picture of us must go. That's like me with my Snapchat my eyes only, but like I keep everything. <laughs> Like, that's my my eyes only. Nobody's ever gonna have access to that. They're just lost to the abyss. But when I send you something like that, like, I expect you to keep it, right? It's a present. It's from, I hand, I hand crafted it. It took me like an hour to get that ass pit. Like, it's like a sweater from your grandma because, like, you didn't necessarily want it, but you kind of have to keep it now. <laughs> I'm not saying those are the rules, but like, those are the rules. <laughs> but yeah, um, speaking of uh, my grandma, my great grandma actually died on the toilet. I mean, I think that that's worse than if she would have went to the nursing home. Because like, if you're at the nursing home, you get like hot babes scrubbing you up, right? You get to like, get sit and like the nurses like kind of give you sponge baths all day you get like applesauce you get to play games with, with your peers like how is that not a better way to go than on the shitter you can laugh at 
with that. She's gone. She's not here. <laughs> but yeah. But like, I mean, I don't know. What could be better than being in a nursing home all day and like just sitting around doing nothing? Maybe like getting yourself a gay boyfriend or something. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have. Um, my name's Sarah Silverman. Yeah, I don't know how to compete with that. All right, I'm Jake. Uh, I've been I've been really pissed lately because I just I thought I was in the clear, and I just found out that they uh they just released a new uh, Jake from State Farm commercial, and I I can't stand that commercial. But what pisses me off even more they didn't even they didn't even change the commercial. It's the same fucking commercial, but they they did change one thing. He's black now, which I don't care. It's fine. It's just like, why is that the thing you have to change in that commercial? Why couldn't it be some new guy like Chris or Pete? I'm tired of it. And I knew it was becoming a thing again, because I was at Taco Bell, waiting for a long time. And finally the cashier's like, Jay from State Farm? And I'm like, oh my f And I walk up, and she's like, get it? Cause the commercial, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm the commercial? The commercial, right? <laughs> Fuck you, Karen. <laughs> I just, I don't get why my parents cursed me. But it's not the worst thing they've done. When I was about 13, I remember I was in my room late one night, and I was texting this girl, and I was trying to get some boobies off of her, and I heard my parents coming up the stairs, and I wasn't supposed to be on my phone, uh, late at night. So I heard him coming and I heard the, the doorknob start jiggling. So I act like I'm asleep. Like, And then they close the door and I'm like, oh, I'm in the clear. And so the morning comes and my mom comes up to me and she's like, you think you're that slick? You think I didn't know you were faking it? Let me see that phone. So I hand her my phone and she's going through my text messages and she sees all the shirtless pics I sent her. and. She's like, were you texting some girl? And I feel like we're all in this situation when your parents are like, did you do this? And you know you're caught, and you're like, no. <laughs> so I had that one coming. So I, she grounded me, and I thought, you know, that's it. A few days go by, and she comes up to me, and she hands me a box. And I open the box, and there's some t-shirts inside. I'm like, well, what the hell is this? And she's like, pick up a shirt. So I pick up the shirt, and I look, and it says, I have deceived and lied to my parents. I have disobeyed them, and this is what is being taken away from me. So I got like my TV taken away, my phone, uh, you know, my music, my bed sheets. <laughs> you ever been in prison? <laughs> so I had to deal with that all summer, so that was fun. Um, I feel like we all have our friend groups, you know, we. Each, each friend has a certain role in our groups, like, yeah, these guys over here. So we got like our leader, our, the funny guy, the dumbass, um, we all have that. So what's my role in my friend group? Uh, I'm the dad, but I am old fashioned. I do spank my boys. I feel like it makes them into better men for this today's future. So, I have one, uh, I have one little one, and he was just causing some problems, and he came up to all of us, and he goes, hey guys, I, uh, I think I'm coming out. I'm like, no way, dude, you're gay? Like, that's great. He's like, no, no, I'm not gay. I'm like, what? He's like, I, I think I have a foot fetish. Oh. I'd rather you be gay. I was, uh, I was on a date a while ago. And it was the first date, and I was a little nervous. And, uh, we, you know, we, we went and got lunch. So we're sitting there talking and getting to know one another. And as we're talking, I'm looking at my phone and my, my bank account. Is zero dollars. I'm like, what do, I, what do I do? So she keeps talking, talking, talking. And I finally, I'm like, excuse me, one moment. I get up and I call my dad. I'm like, hey, uh, I have zero dollars. Can you help a guy out? And he hung, hangs up on me. So, I'm standing there contemplating what to do. I'm like, I believe that women can pay for meals too. Like, we're all equal. I, I know that. 
And I'm like, but am I that guy to make her do it? And I'm like, well, fuck it, let's just do it. So I go and sit down in my car and I leave. <laughs> The funny thing about that though, that was my first date with uh, my fiance now. And yes, I know, I know. But uh, that's, that's when she learned that, you know, I, I live up to my name, I'm a, that I'm a liar and I'm a deceiver, you know? So, <laughs> thank you guys. James Terrell, let's give a big hand for James! So, I'm going to tell a story about a uh, party that I went to over Thanksgiving break. So, a uh, good buddy of mine, he has a party every Thanksgiving break, the day after Thanksgiving, called a You're Welcome Party. <laughs> so, for those of you keeping track at home, that is Thanksgiving dinner, Thursday night, You're Welcome Party, Friday night. So, uh, now... I can kind of tell from the crowd's re reaction that uh, most of you guys agree, uh, you know, that my buddy's humor is about as dry as a cloistered nun. <laughs> which, which I would agree. Uh, but, it's beside the point. I mean, I'm allowed to make those jokes because I'm Catholic. I went to Catholic school for 12 years. No, I was never molested by a priest, alright? Just sickos, relax. <laughs> So, anyways, um, me, and, me and my buddy's plan, you know, we're, we're, getting, ready, we're getting ready for the party, we uh, meet up, we pre-game heavily, we get an Uber on the way there, uh, and, you know, by kind of a crazy twist of fate, the, our Uber ends up being, like, really cool. She's this, uh, you know, blonde girl, late 20s, uh, you know, she's really vibing with me and my buddy's drunk energy, <laughs> which, you know, at the time was actually, like, that's pretty cool. Uh, looking back... She was likely inebriated in herself. <laughs> yeah, like, that was, that was a bit disturbing. Um, but, you know, by the grace of God, she gets to the party, so sweet. You know, we're good. My, uh, my buddies and I were just about to exit the car. We're, you know, getting out of the, the, the vehicle. And she goes, hey, do you guys mind if I come in for a drink? And we're like, yeah, fuck it, why not? Come in. So she comes from this party, she knows no one, uh, you know, she's kind of a stranger in a strange land, but to her credit, she makes herself pretty comfortable. Uh, you know, she helps herself with snacks straight away, grabs a drink straight away. So it's like, alright, it's good, she, she's down to, down to party, it's great. So what we do next is like, hey, let's all play some slap cup. And the Uber driver, whose car is parked outside, who needs to drive home, was like, yeah, play some slap cup. Don't know why, but all right. So we go, we start playing slap cup. Uh, you'll remember the loser of the game has to drink a beer. Uh, she ends up having to drink a beer three times. So she's a few drinks in, and you know, me and my buddies were kind of obnoxiously drunk at that point. And instead of saying like, hey, you know, are, are you sure you want to have that drink? You know, you gotta drive home. Instead of saying that, we we're just like. The Uber's gonna need to call an Uber! <laughs> so, um, she ends up, you know, she, she somehow drives home. I think she got back safe, hopefully. I, I don't know. <laughs> I really do, I, I do hope she's fine. I, but we, uh, so, she left. It got to the point in the night where I was like, uh, yeah, I can go for a cigarette. I'm drunk enough. So, I walk outside. Through, the, through an open glass door. I walk outside and, ah, uh, shoot, I forgot my lighter. So I walk back inside through the still open glass sliding door. Walk back inside, find my lighter, great. Now I'm walking back outside through what I think is an open glass sliding door, but it's actually closed and I slam face first right into it. And how that goes, it's, if you haven't slammed into an open glass sliding door, or sorry, a closed glass sliding door, it's it's kind of like a condom breaking. You know, it's it's very it's very sudden. It's slightly terrifying, and you can kind of question how you got to that point. So, I I turn around, and I see I've got five witnesses, and instead of saying like, oh no, I'm fine, don't worry guys, I just go. <laughs> 
right in their faces like it's a frat party or something. Like that. Um, and they're just like, they cheer me on. They're like, yeah, buddy, all right, let's go. And my only thought is like, they're thinking, well, yeah, he's got brain damage, but at least he's a good sport about it. <laughs> um, but I really don't remember much after that. Uh, I pretty much went home and uh, had a headache the next day, and I don't think it was from any of the drinks that I had. <laughs> Thanks, guys. JD! Coming out, open to the Mad Mush. Uh, to answer the question that you already had, yes, I do always dress like I'm trying to convince you that my dad's gonna sue you. <laughs> if you can tell by my everything, I'm from Carmel, Indiana. But more on that later. <laughs> don't, guys, my, don't let this fool you, okay? I am hardcore, I'm part of a gang. You definitely know our letters, okay? I'm part of the LSG, Little Spoon Gang. <laughs> Yuck it up, Big Spooners. Have fun when tonight the only thing asleep is your right arm. <laughs> you got a mouthful of hair. Uh, no, I am 6'1", my girlfriend is 5'1". This pose is an obvious image problem when we're spooning. Uh, if you've never seen something like that, imagine looking at it from above. Uh, it's a very long and blanky turtle with a very small jet patch. <laughs> Uh, if you've never had the pleasure of sharing a twin bed with someone, the other person takes up about 40%, and then if you have a dog like I do, they take up woo, the other 60. So I sleep on the floor every night. I know, but I do love my dog. Her name is Beyonce. We go on the same walk every single day past Trent Johnson State Farm office. And every day she takes a shit in the same spot right next to the floor to ceiling window at Trent Johnson State Farm. So Trent Johnson and I, every morning, have this nice little stare down. Uh, my favorite part of that interaction, though, is that when you open the door to Trent Johnson State Farm, it says, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Or, like, it is every morning for me, like a good neighbor, get the fuck off my lawn! <laughs> Comes out of it. Uh, I am really white, like, translucent white, if you couldn't tell. Uh, if I'm up here too long, I might get sunburned. Um, I have problems with the automatic sink. So usually you put your hand in, and it detects in, it's like, I put my hand in, it's just like, no, nope, that's just more porcelain. <laughs> that is see-through. It's actually because my mom is a polar bear, and my dad is a ghost. I uh, really had me. Um, so like I said, I'm from Carmel, Indiana. Can I get it one time for Carmel? Uh, That's how I thought that would go. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, I lie about where I'm from all the time. Hey, where are you from? Uh, Indianapolis. Get a little less specific. Uh, but I had to be hardcore at Carmel, so I got a tattoo in the Carmel Tattoo Shop. You guys don't know a lot about that. There are three options. You can get a cupcake tramp stamp. You can get a Toyota Prius on your left arm. Or you can get a roundabout. I went with the roundabout, and I had to think about circular places to put it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Indy 500 when I get one. Oh man. Uh, so guys, big tragedy in the state of Indiana. Does anyone know why it's a tragedy today? Indiana Beach closed its trailer park entrance for the final time today. <laughs> Has anybody been to Indiana Beach? All right, so do you sleep with your cousin before or after? <laughs> after? Okay. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, Indiana Beach is a theme, theme park that uh, you can find Indiana's best mullets and RVs at. <laughs> Everyone is related. Um, I actually, I don't think it's a theme park. I think it's actually just a trailer park with a flooding problem. <laughs> um, yeah, but it always boggles my mind when people are like, oh yeah, I spent the day in Indiana Beach. We're landlocked. We don't have a beach in Indiana. No, that's not, that's not a beach. Um, Sally doesn't sell seashells by the seashore. It's Jackson with an X, and he's there to sell you crack. <laughs> they always say, like, keep your eye on the water, you know, look out for riptides. Uh, keep your eye on the water so you don't get stabbed <laughs> in Indiana Beach. But I've been so many times that my used needle collection is really popular. I've got a lot of them. Uh, so, I think I only have a minute left. I'll give you two that I've been working on. Um, does anyone off the top of their head know the state motto for Indiana? 
Nope. I did a really good job at the marketing office in the state house uh, in, with my internship. It's Indiana Honest to Goodness. Indiana Honest to Goodness. It sounds like something you'd say after the thing before it wasn't true. Mom, my car smells like that because I hit a skunk. Honest to goodness. Or in the case of Indiana, this is a good state to live. Honest to goodness. I think a better one would be, Indiana, is that your needle or is that mine? Which spoon is this? Uh, I'll leave it with this. I look really young. Uh, I like to go see scary movies, and sometimes I go with my parents, um, and they're always like, no, you have to be over 16 to see this movie when I get to the box office. Colossal boost of confidence. Um, but I had to prove my age somehow because I didn't have my ID on me. Uh, so I just decided to show them that my balls had dropped and I went through puberty. But guys, don't worry about it. I'm used to showing my genitals to old men because I grew up Catholic. <laughs> Up next, we have, I believe, someone who's doing Illinois for the very first time. Let's give a warm welcome to Joe. Hey, so I know it's my first time, but I didn't dress up for this. This is just how I dress. Okay. <laughs> Please believe me. That guy wore a tie, so. <laughs> now, uh, I know it's my first time up here, so. You know, I actually saw the ad for this on Reddit while I was supposed to be writing a paper that was due in uh, four hours. So I started writing some material for this, uh, as one does. Now, I thought this would be fun because, you know, get yourself out of your comfort zone, but I really feel like I could have chosen something more fun to do. Because, uh, you know, some people, they want to get out of their comfort zone, so they're like, hey, I, let's go to this new restaurant downtown, or let's try LSD, you know? <laughs> That's fun, right? I've only ever been to Applebee's, so. <laughs> but yeah, for me though, what I'm doing is I'm coming up here to have you all let me know that I'm not as funny as I think I am. But uh, I don't need all of you to tell me that if I would just uh, listen to my ex. But look who's laughing now. <laughs> A pity laugh, you're too kind. <laughs> So related to that, I got a Tinder recently. Pretty fun. Um, I told one, I've never had a Tinder before. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I've never had a Tinder before, so I told one of my friends, I said, yeah, you know, I get to see what all the hype's about. And he said, that's not a perk of a breakup. <laughs> but I mean, it is for me because my name is Joe, so my bio gets to be, I'm not Joe Mama, but I can be Joe Daddy. <laughs> But that's a lie, I'm not confident enough for a bio like that. So. My real bio is, not gonna lie, I'm kind of a dad. Cause that's the vibe my pictures get off, or they give off, sorry. That's the vibe that my, that's the vibe that my pictures give off. So that's, I, I kind of have to be honest with you. Like my, uh, my profile picture is me in a polo. But let me stop. If anyone out there, any ladies are interested in this, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll give you a tour of my Tinder after the show. <laughs> but, uh, so what happens is that my profile picture is me in a polo, it's got nice lighting, I use my DSLR, I tried, I put in some effort, right? But it's one of those pictures that, like, my mom would look at and go, you're such a handsome young man. <laughs> and that's not really the vibe that you're going for on Tinder, right? So, it's been, it's been a toss-up. <laughs> I'm new at this, I gotta look at my next joke. Oh yeah, so uh, <laughs> what I'm thinking about is taking new profile pictures, so I'm not discoverable right now while I plan my next profile picture. I'm thinking tomorrow I'm more of a bad boy vibe, you know? <laughs> Got some shades, maybe in my Ford Focus in the front. <laughs> and now here's where you're really good at to the, uh, to the next level. You don't smile and you don't look at the camera. Okay? I'm Joe. Six foot. Six inches. Scorpio. My height's the six foot. Uh, my type is female and alive. In the immortal words of Josh Peck, a pulse, usually. <laughs> But, yeah, you know, switching gears, uh, this is completely different. Who wants to hear a political joke? 
Yeah. Oh shit, I was really hoping you guys wouldn't want that. Because they don't want that in the back. I don't have a political joke. My joke was, well, you don't get to be upset because I'm from Ohio, so my vote, my vote matters more, and I want to do a political joke. But <laughs> you guys are politically conscious. That's, that's good. <laughs> Yay, democracy. <laughs> but yeah, my political joke isn't that political. I just think that we should treat our service workers better, you know, in this country. Uh, we don't treat them well enough. And this is, this is prompted by a uh, visit I had to Wendy's yesterday. <laughs> And you thought this was going to be more controversial, but don't worry, the abortion jokes are coming. <laughs> oh, you don't want those? Don't worry, I have a plan B. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I'm at Wendy's just last night, actually, which was convenient, because I didn't have enough to talk about up here. And I'm, I'm rolling up at 10.45, and you, you guys know that uh, McDonald's is 24 hours, but I don't know if Wendy's is, but... I wanted a good burger, so I roll up to this Wendy's and they're mopping. Like, okay, maybe they're closed. So I roll up to the drive thru and the lady's like, Hi, what can I do for you? And I'm you know, I'm a zoomer and I'm like, hey, are you like open? Are you are you cleaning? Are you closed? And I don't want to be a bother. And she's like, Well, you know, if we were closed, I probably wouldn't have asked what I could get you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I gotta backpedal. I gotta, I'm like, you know, you know I don't, I've had a food service job. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put you out. Like, you're cleaning up. And she's like, well, you know, she didn't let me out of it. <laughs> she's like, you know, actually, if I, if I wasn't, if we weren't open, I probably wouldn't have even asked. I wouldn't have said anything. So then I just gotta be like, yeah, man, okay, um, you're right, you're right. I'm sorry. Can I have a meeting? Bye. She's like, no. I could just go if you want. <laughs> but anyway, he's flashing my light at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you guys. It was fun. Here we go. Next, we have our very own JT. Wow. Give me a sec. I didn't memorize my show. Oh, wait. Hold on. All right, for real. KFC in Afghanistan, bro. <laughs> How does that happen? There's a chicken restaurant in a country that's equivalent to a Call of Duty map, bro. Fucked up. Like, I, I like to, I like to be at that board meeting where they decided to put a KFC in the middle, and I can't reiterate this enough, Afghanistan, bro. All right, guys. Uh, Profits are down from last year and, well, we need to expand overseas. Anybody got any ideas on where we can go? And it's like, I got an idea. Pick me. Pick, oh my god, my nose is bleeding. Afghanistan. Like, like, is the marketing over there just like a TV ad? It's just like, hi folks, Colonel Sanders here. I just drone striked another orphanage. <laughs> I've committed multiple atrocities. Unless you don't buy my new five dollar fill up boxes, I'm gonna do it again. Right now, now we're cooking with gasoline, bro. So the reason they call the passenger seat a uh, shotgun in a car, right, is because during Manifest Destiny and like Westward uh, expansion, like there would be a guy, right, like basically steering the wagon, and a guy next to him that would hold a shotgun and would shoot at Native Americans if they came too close. I know, it's, it's horrible. Now here's a joke about that. <laughs> Shouldn't it be like a racial slur for Native Americans, the word shotgun? Like you're just on the reservation with your homie who's Native American. You guys are heading to the casino because it's like the only thing to do there. It's like the only building that has like more than two stories on the reservation. You're just like, it's like, Hey, yo, bro, let's head to the casino. I call shotgun. And he's just like, how dare you say that? <laughs> it's extremely offensive to my people, pale face. <laughs> like, oh shit, my bad, chief. Chief! <laughs> Listen, man, just because I'm a Native American doesn't mean I'm a tribal leader. 
I'm a sales representative for Marlboro Cigarettes. <laughs> Such a dumb joke, man. Why did I do that? So, like, uh, I don't know if, like, girls can attest to this, but guys probably, you guys probably, like, notice that sometimes, like, deodorants have, like, really stupid names, right? Like, I feel like Old Spice is, like, the prime example of this, right? They don't have, like, regular names, like, regular or fresh or, like, sixth grade dance cologne. It's like, it's always some shit like Fiji or, like, octopus. I'm like, god damn, man. I'm just trying not to smell like a piece of shit. It's, like, I don't know, man, for real. It's like, like, are they in the lab just like, Johnson, get over here real quick. I just made this new deodorant. Can you tell me what it smells like? It's like, it smells like a little sanctuary. Oh, shit, I was thinking the same thing. You want to make out? Sure. Then they start making out. Like, right now, the deodorant that I'm wearing right now is called, um, Volcano, so I smell like toxic fumes. <laughs> like I, I'm actually kind of curious, curious as to how they got that like scent. Like, did they go to like an active erupting volcano? It's like you smell that, Johnson. All that ash in the air. It's beautiful. It makes my heart heavy. It's like I think that's just your lungs collapsing, man. <laughs> like, oh shit, you're right. I think we're gonna die. <laughs> and then they die in each other's arms. <laughs> That's all I have, bro. Thank you. Last but not least, let's welcome Lucas to the stage. Alright, how y'all doing tonight? Good. Awesome. Audience participation. Check. Cool. <laughs> Alright, so, uh... They look great. Alright, so... I want to start tonight off, not with a joke, but just with a fun fact that I thought y'all need to know, just because I learned it. And, uh... Y'all know what Power Rangers is, right? Yeah. Alright, well, fun fact. The original Red Power Ranger, after doing Power Rangers, decided, hey, how should I change up my acting career? I know, hardcore gay porn. <laughs> yeah. Bold switch. But it is what it is. But also, just going off that, why are fun facts almost never fun? Like, seriously, like, I, I had a friend who said, fun fact, uh, people have actually been murdered in this alley every 20 years. And I was like, dude, it's fucking 2020. <laughs> like, are you about to reset this shit? <laughs> like, I, I had a friend to just be like, fun fact, every year, some kid that used to play trumpet in middle school goes missing. <laughs> like, what the fuck? What? Is it that oddly specific? Anyways, uh, <laughs> so, uh, of course, yes. So th there's, th there's a lot of ways to show that you're like enjoying something, right? Like, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, awesome, you can clap, you can cheer, like shit like that. You know, stand up comedy, you laugh, that's a thing. Sex is different, like, oh, you can say almost anything for sex, but there's one thing you can't do. And that's say, yup. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that good for you? Yup. <laughs> like, what are you gonna say next? Indeed! <laughs> But, uh, and like you can't do that at like a fucking stand-up comedy thing. Like you can't just like there's some things you do at uh, when you're like you know doing it that you can't do in like public. You know like moaning. Moaning's just weird. Like you're been like, hey man, you want some cheese bread? And they're just like, oh. Like you know to immediately, I do not know you. Leave. It's just there's just so many different weird things about communication. Whether it's talking, or fucking sign language, or just, it doesn't matter the language, there's some weird things. And, yeah, there's no punchline for that, so deal with it. Uh, so, uh, I almost got kidnapped last semester. Going off the Amber Alert thing. Uh, just made the cut. So, so uh, long story short, uh, I was in Attica, Indiana. And for those of you that are not from Indiana, I was in Bumblefuck, Indiana, uh, to the point that Uber and Lyft do not operate in Attica, Indiana. And I was told this five minutes out of Attica by my Lyft driver. So, you know, step one, panic. So I'm sitting there waiting like, all right, how the fuck am I gonna get out of this? 
So, uh, as everyone does, I went to the nearest old person. And this old guy goes, oh yeah, no worries. My friend's granddaughter works for Uber. Just come to my house and she'll pick you up there. So, you know, me being the smart person I am, I went. Now, fun fact about this guy's house. It's in an old church. There is nothing fun about church in general, in my opinion. So going to an old church, that's a bit, or something that used to be a church, that's a lot worse. Especially if I've lived anything from horror movies. There's at least one thing trying to kill you. Maybe two. Three and you're pushing it. But uh, so I'm sitting outside this church, and you know you're in a horror movie when there's a bell tower next to a church. Especially when that bell tower goes on at, uh, words, yes, at 7.58 for 20 minutes. I'm sitting outside of a church listening to the fucking seventh rendition of uh, Ring Around the Rosie on an electronic bell tower in Bumblefuck, Indiana. Like, huh, when am I gonna die? And I was sitting with my friend David, who is significantly more athletic, and we're both like, so, uh, it's obvious I'm gonna die. The question is, do they catch you, or like, do you like trip? Like, how, how horror movie are we going here? And you know, we're chilling outside the church, we're, we're eating some snacks, and a brown van pulls up. Now, it had windows, so it's a good start, but it's still a brown, unmarked van. So, me being the guy I am, the brilliant person I am, I go into the van. And, uh, you know, there's nothing, there's something, there's nothing more unsettling than walking into an unmarked brown van and immediately seeing three 12-year-old girls. <laughs> they had, they were, they were chilling. They were obviously the woman's daughter. Let, let me preface with that. But when you walk into an unmarked brown van with some 12-year-olds, which one, I never thought I'd say out loud, and two, uh, and they immediately make fun of your friend's hydro flask. You're just like, yeah, I'm gonna die. But I didn't, so there you go. All right, that's all I got. Have a good one, y'all. A very special guest. Welcome to the stage, Randall Kane. Thank you. 
thought about petroleum. <laughs> it's very dangerous to acquire it, so I'm told under very mysterious circumstances. We used to acquire fuel by draining the earth of its coal in mine shafts. That was also very dangerous. Not as dangerous as petroleum. I must assume. Could you imagine being the guy who fell down the mine shaft? I got you beat. Meanwhile, the guy who stayed in bed and did literally nothing beat all of them. Well, here's a better one. Hey, bro, 
This weekend I took this girl home from the bar, and guess what? I came too early. <laughs> yeah, she was severely disappointed. <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> so, um, what else happened? The other day, someone invited me to a trivia night. I said, you know, I don't think I can go to trivia. I'm not that good at it. Well, you don't have to be good at trivia. They just ask you seemingly random questions that bear no significance on the rest of your life. And if you have to know the answer, well, brownie points for you. Oh, so it's just like a liberal arts class. <laughs> so at this uh, trivia night, they had categories, broken up into categories. And let me tell you, nothing got people more riled up than asking about history. I mean, not that I think history is lame, but I mean, I'm not stretching the elastic over some old white dudes. Now, let me tell you, the history buffs there, they just have it on. They can tell you down to the exact date that a bunch of old white dudes said, you know what, I'm going to kill some old white people. And they can tell you everything about the piece of paper they signed that said, no more killing old white people. And then they can relive all of the details about how they said, fuck that paper, I'm going to kill some more old white people. No, uh, there were some more interesting categories than just history. Namely, there was like a uh, sex-themed category. So fun fact I learned, fun fact, apparently when bees, when they bust a nut, their balls will violently explode. Like, it makes an audible popping noise. <laughs> Can bees do anything without killing themselves? No wonder they're dying at alarming rate. <laughs> There were some other uh, sex-themed facts about humans. See, they say because your DNA has information in it, and you can measure that information, each sperm cell has something like 40 megabytes of info in this DNA, which means that your average load size is something like 1,500 terabytes. And I'm sitting there like, damn, that's a lot of information to swallow. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, I was on my phone a couple years ago, got this Amber Alert, it said, old man steals a baby. So next thing you know, I start canceling plans, start tackling old men with babies, you know? Mom was like, what about dinner? I was like, you not see the Amber Alert? Why are you not on board? But I ended up tackling about 60 old men. Um, here's a fun fact about Amber Alerts. Uh, for the message to be sent out, the kid must be 18 years or younger. So if you're 19 and you get kidnapped, good luck with your life, you know? <laughs> Hope he treats you well, makes you pancakes or something, because you don't matter now. Uh, I like going to concerts. I bought this uh, concert ticket. Chipping and handling was 20 bucks. I bought these tickets online. I'm not really sure where this ship is going. Um, and handling, handling is, that's not, that shouldn't be a real job, because if it is, fuck Purdue, I'm leaving to become a handler. So all it is, is just, you know, hey, here are your potatoes, and you get major bank, you know? It sounds like a pretty good gig to me. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. Uh, uh, I have a dog, I travel, uh, I wanted to travel with him on a flight once, and um, he, uh, so I searched up airline pet restrictions, right? And the first thing that came up was pet must be accompanied by human. I was like, does that really need to be mentioned? I mean, how many dogs are just taking solo flights around the US? You know? like, like, who's reading that? And it was like, oh, how am I gonna bring the news to Bruno? <laughs> he wanted to go to Arizona by himself. It's not good, it's not good. I don't know, something that obvious is stated as the first thing under pet restrictions, like that that's happened this definitely happened before, you know? And what was that like? You know, like the pet owners just drop off the airport, you know, you figure it out. You know? Um uh, I like watching movies too. Um uh, I, but I hate when romantic movies, all of them have this moment when it's like it's, it's love at first sight, you know? Like, you know, guy bumps into girl, girl drops her book, so they they pick up the book, so oh, wow, it's love at first sight, you know? So in every movie, I hate it, because it's cliche, 
And it's not true. Like, I have dropped my books plenty of times in front of women. I'm, they, all they do is just look at me and walk by. <laughs> I'm still very single, you know? <laughs> I don't know, I, I, just, I feel like they should make that scene more realistic, you know? Like, you know, guy bumps into girl, she drops her books, and then they're like, whoa, is this love at first sight? And the other one's like, what? What are you stupid? Why would I do that? <laughs> you might be a rapist. And then they move on with their lives. Um, another thing about these movies, uh, a lot of them have this, have them, this sorry, a lot of them have this disclaimer saying that all characters are fictional, and any resemblance is purely coincidental, right? But, I don't know, I feel like, and they say that for legal reasons, but I don't know how that ever, you know, come up. You know, like what, you're at a mall somewhere, there's some guy shoplifting, you're like, oh my god, this is just like, Paul Blart and all the too. Call the police. Okay, I'm gonna get off stage now. Thanks for uh, bearing with me. Uh, Will. Stevie. You're next. Welcome to the Stage! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, hello. I recently went to Caps, but you know, with all the budget cuts, they're just like, here, have a noose. That's all they have. <laughs> Valentine's Day was very recent. It just passed by a few days ago. What a shit holiday Valentine's Day is. It sucks. I'll tell you why. There's three things you can do on Valentine's Day. Three options. You can go on a date, you can masturbate while crying, and you can go see the Sonic movie. That's it. Or if you're an overachiever like me, you can do all three at the same time. No, no, baby. But you know, I, I don't hate Valentine's Day because, you know, it's about the dating. I'm obviously not a guy who gets a lot of dates. I look like, I'm the kind of guy who gets stood up at dates. Cause like, you know, look at the way I, look, look at me, just look at all of this. I'm wearing a suit to an open mic. That's sad. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so how many of you are single out here tonight? Yeah, that's not a surprise. You're at an open mic on a Wednesday. That's sad. Yeah. But you know, you know, I, I, I have been on dates before. Um, the problem is they're usually set up by my mom. Which is just the worst kind of date, because my mom's like, Honey, do you have a girlfriend yet? You never call home anymore, I'm getting very bored, you need some feminine company in your life. But she's not Jewish, by the way, she just acts like that. I didn't find out she wasn't Jewish until I was like 16, it's like, oh, I'm Lutheran. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why couldn't I eat bacon for like 18 years? But, you know, I got there, we were at a Chili's, we sat down, we were romantic, I know. We got at the Chili's, we sat down. I ordered like fajitas because I'm not a psychopath. She ordered lasagna at a Chili's. It's just no. And like the conversation sucked, right? I'm like, so what do you like to do for fun? Nothing. <laughs> what do you like to do for not fun? Nothing. And like, long story short, she was a lesbian. <laughs> yeah, and, and so like I come home, I'm like, mom, what the fuck? She's a lesbian. Why'd you set me up? With her. And it's like, well, she wanted to go to med school, and I figured that she's probably getting desperate. Fuck you, mom. Man. And so, like, and then I asked her, why are you agreeing to come to me with this date? It's like, I just really like lasagna. You did not go on a date with me. You went on a date with lasagna, and that's the best date I've ever been on. It's true. But you know, people always shit on Valentine's Day, and, and I agree, it should be shit on, but not because of like all the annoying couples that are like, I love you more. No, I love you more. I love you more. Let's kiss consensually. That's fine. I don't care. What I care about are all the fat white dudes who complain about not being able to get a date. Wouldn't know what that's like. Um, because you know, it's a very easy bridge from I'm sad that I can't get a date to I hate women. Why do they do that? They do that all the time. It's just, I don't know, man. Fat guys and women, we have a lot in common. We really do. I'm going to talk about some problems that fat guys have. If you're a woman, you have this problem. Go ahead and make some noise. If you're a dude, shut up. This isn't about you. <laughs> all right, problem number one, under boob sweat. <laughs> all right, all right, not too many people. Uh, your thighs rubbing together because they're fat. <laughs> uh, let's see, having trouble getting your jeans over your big old ass. <laughs> It's a problem, man, it's a problem. And you know, I don't do myself any favors. Like, I look like a Mr. Rogers with depression. Like, like if I was trying to fuck you, it'd be like, <laughs> Howdy, Nathan. <laughs> You're a little 
slut, aren't you? It doesn't work. It does not work. Also, I just realized I'm wearing Crocs and socks and a tie. I want to kill myself. How much time do I have? Minute ten. What can I do with a minute ten? Um, I recently realized that like all of the dining courts here, I didn't know this. They have like rotating meals, and I, I'm gonna be here for four years, and I'm gonna have to eat the same shit over and over again. And so like I realized, Purdue isn't preparing me for the real world. Isn't preparing me for the job office. It's preparing me for marriage. Same shit over and over. And uh, I don't have a punchline. I'm going to go drink my sorrows away. Thank you.